Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Don Mecca. On this channel, we react to fascinating videos that we find on the internet. And today's video is courtesy to one of our new subscribers, Fun Tech. Thank you for the recommendation. Today's video is the largest star in the universe. This is another Quartz Kazarts video. I love this channel. And it seems like a lot of people want us to continue to react to these videos. So I'm going to focus in on a bunch. I actually have another commentator who recommended a list of videos. So I'm going to go through the whole list and check out the videos and react to them with you guys. And we could spark some discussions on it. Today's video is the largest star in the universe size comparison, right? And as you'll always know, go check out the channel. If you've never heard of it, it's amazing animated scientific based videos also make sure to always like when i searched up this video they actually had three versions of it so if this does well i'll do the other two versions later on but this one was released three years ago so let's go check it out what is the largest star in the universe and what speaking of stars obviously the sun is a star and it's a yellow dwarf and uh, you know what's incredible about it over a million Earths could fit inside the sun. Just think about that, how crazy that is. We barely could get around the Earth. And there's, you know, over a million of them could fit inside the sun that we have locally. And it's called a dwarf star. Picture that, meaning tiny. Why is it that large? And what are stars anyway? Things that would like to be stars. We begin our journey with Earth, not to learn anything, just to get a vague sense of scale. Higher. The smallest things that have some star-like properties are large gas giants or sub-brown dwarfs. Like Jupiter, the most massive planet in the solar Huge. system. 11 Huge. times larger and 317 times more massive than Earth and more or less made of the same stuff as our Sun. Just much less of it. The transition Humongous towards stuff. stars begins with brown dwarfs, failed stars that are a huge disappointment to their mums. They have between 13 and 90 oh, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> times the mass of Jupiter. So even if we took 90 Jupiters and threw them at each other, although fun to watch, it wouldn't be enough to create a star. Interestingly, insane, adding right? lots of insane to think about that, right? Mass to a brown dwarf doesn't make it much bigger, just it's insides denser. This increases the pressure in the core enough to make certain nuclear fusion reactions happen slowly and the object glow a little. So brown dwarfs are a sort of glowy gas giant that don't fit into any category very well. Imagine when humanity masters fusion technology. It seems like we're very close to it. There's a bunch of videos on that too. Let me know in the comments if you want me to find these videos about fusion technology and do a reaction on it. But we want to talk about stars, not failed wannabe stars. So let's move on. Main sequence stars. Whoever wrote the script is a little spicy today. Once large gas balls pass a certain mass threshold, their cores become hot and dense enough to ignite. Hydrogen is fused to helium in their cores. Two of the most abundant elements in the universe. Releasing tremendous amounts of energy. Stars that do that are called main sequence stars. The more massive a main sequence star is, the hotter and brighter it burns, and the shorter its life is. And the more dangerous it is. Constantly radiating crazy solar plasma splashes all, if there's any planets around them. Once the hydrogen burning phase is over, stars grow. Up to hundreds of thousands of times their original size. Did you hear that? Hundreds of thousands of times of something that's already humongous. But these giant phases only last for a fraction of their lifespan. So we'll be comparing stars at drastically different stages in their lives. This doesn't make them less impressive, but maybe it's good to keep in mind that we'll be comparing babies to adults. Now back to the beginning. The smallest real stars are red dwarfs about 100 times the mass of Jupiter, barely massive enough to fuse hydrogen to helium. Because they are not very massive, oh they are small, not very hot, and shine pretty dimly. They are the only stars in the main sequence that don't grow once they die, but fizzle out. Red dwarfs are by far the most abundant type in the universe. 
Because they burn their fuel very slowly, these guys probably last for close to the end of the universe, right? It lasts them up to 10 trillion years, a thousand times the current age of the universe. Jeez. For example, one of the closest stars to Earth is a red dwarf star, Barnard star, but it shines too dimly to be seen without a telescope. We made a whole video on red dwarfs if you want to learn more. The next stage are stars like our sun. To say the sun dominates the solar system is not doing it justice since it makes up 99.86% of all its mass. It burns far hotter and brighter than red dwarfs, which reduces its lifetime to about 10 billion years. That is crazy. Look how much bigger the sun is compared to Bernard's star, which is apparently the closest one to us. Look at Earth. I don't think this is the scale, is it? No, it's the scale. Definitely not to scale because then you wouldn't be able to see any of the details. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, these would be just imagine a million plus of these fitting in here. That would be the scale. The sun is seven times more massive than Barnard's star, but that makes it nearly 300 times brighter with twice its surface temperature. Interesting. Seven times bigger, more massive. But as a result, it's 300 times more bright. Let's go bigger. Small changes in mass produce enormous changes in a main sequence star's bright. Mm -hmm. As we saw with the, the difference in brightness between the two. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, is two solar masses with a radius 1.7 times that of the sun. But its surface is nearly 10,000 degrees Celsius, making it shine 25 times brighter. Burning yeah. that hot reduces its total lifespan by four times to 2.5 billion years. Stars close to 10 times the mass of our sun have surface temperatures near 25,000 degrees Celsius. Jeez. Beta Centauri contains two of these massive stars, each shining with about 20,000 times the power of the sun. That's a lot of power coming from something only 30 20 times the power of the sun. And this is, uh, this is one of the places where it's a target for exploration. This whole solar system, Centauri. Um, I, I wonder if there's, it's one of the closest ones that we could go visit in a human's lifetime, possibly, if we develop uh, fast enough rockets. It's literally scientifically possible to go visit this other star, which makes it a very interesting target to research because there's planets revolving around this one. One of these, there's A and B. In times larger, but they'll only burn for about 20 million years. Entire generations of these blue stars die in the time it takes the sun to orbit the galaxy once. So is this the formula? The more massive, the larger the star. The most massive star that we know is R136A1. It has 315 solar masses and is nearly... 315 solar masses, my goodness. Like, can you even sit there and just try to imagine that? You go from Earth, can you even imagine the whole of the Earth in your mind? You take that and you multiply it by a million times to get the sun. More than a million times, I think it's like one point three or something in that area you take that and then you multiply that by 300 it is just insane to think about nine million times brighter than the sun and yet despite its trim and it's nine million times brighter than the sun if you think you're doing some tanning here shh. tremendous mass and power it's barely 30 times the size of the sun the star is why is that so extreme and barely held together by gravity that it loses 321,000 billion tons of material through its stellar wind. Every wow. single second, stars of every every freaking second this sort are extremely rare because they break the rules of star formation a tiny bit. When supermassive stars are born, they burn extremely hot and bright, and this blows away any extra gas that could make them more massive. The mass limit for such a star is around 150 times the sun. Stars like R136A1 are probably formed through the merger of several high mass stars in dense star forming regions and burn their core hydrogen in only a few million years. So this wow. means they are rare and short lived. Wow. From here, the trick to going bigger isn't adding more mass. To make the biggest stars, we have to kill them. What? Red giants. 
What? When main sequence stars begin to exhaust the hydrogen in their core, it contracts, making it hotter and denser. Okay. This leads to hotter and faster fusion, which pushes back against gravity and makes the outer layers swell in a... That's another interesting thing about stars, right? There's that, that balancing act between the fusion energy pushing out and then the gravitational force keeping everything together. So if that balance is broken, there's either implosion or explosion. Implosion into maybe a black hole or uh, something else, another type of star, or... An explosion. Ooh. A giant phase. And these stars become truly giant indeed. For example, Gakrux. Only 30% more massive than the sun, it has swollen to about 84 times its radius. Still, when the sun what? enters the last stage of its life, it will swell and become even bigger. 200 times. Let's look at this again. Look at where the sun is. Look at where the sun is. And it's practically the biggest thing we know here on Earth. Generations, centuries, most of humanity. That's all they, we knew. It was the biggest presence in, in the sky besides the moon. And it, it's tiny com in comparison to these guys. And to about 84 times its radius. Still, when the sun enters the last stage of its life, it will swell and become even bigger. 200 times it's and that kind of sucks for earth right we're revolving around this getting bigger and bigger god bye bye earth current radius in this final phase of its life it will swallow the inner planets and if you yeah i think that's impressive let's finally introduce the largest stars in the universe hold up there's more <laughs> Oh, Hypergiants. Hypergiants are the giant phase of the most massive stars in the universe. They have an enormous surface area that can radiate an insane amount of light. Being so large, they're basically blowing themselves apart, as gravity at the surface is too weak to hold on to the hot mass which is lifted away in powerful stellar winds. Crystal star is 25 solar masses these the materials being expelled on these solar winds is probably orders of magnitude larger than earth <laughs> like, is this? but 300 times and that's the scraps times the radius of the sun a blue hypergiant aptly named for its energetic blue starlight it's hard to say exactly how long pistol star will live but probably just a few million years mm -hmm. even larger than the blue hypergiants are the yellow hypergiants the most well-studied is Rho Cassiopeia, a star so bright it can be seen with the naked eye, although it's thousands of light years from... How does it still appear yellow when it's so big and producing so much illumination? Anybody know? Earth. At... Is it actually called yellow hypergiant because the light is yellow? 40 solar masses, this star is around 500 times the radius of the sun and five or are they just call it coding it for fun <laughs> 500,000 times brighter if the earth were as close to Rho Cassiopeia as it is to the sun it would be inside it and you would be very dead that sucks yellow hypergiants are very rare though only 15 are known this only 15 we've discovered <laughs> means they're likely just a short-lived intermediate state as a star grows or shrinks between other phases of hypergiantness with red hyper okay then now that makes sense the giants we why the color reach the largest stars known to us probably the <laughs> largest <laughs> stars even possible who's the winner of this insane contest anybody know anybody know are you guys are you guys in the know of this let's hear the answer who is the winner who is the largest star in the universe the truth we're about to find out that he said the truth hints that maybe we already talked about it maybe he's about to be misleading let's see this we don't know oh we don't know come on cuts 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 don't play with my emotions this way red hypergiants are extremely bright and far away which means that even tiny uncertainties in our measurements can give us a huge margin of error for their size. Okay, makes sense. Worse makes still, sense. red hypergiants are solar system sized behemoths that are blowing themselves apart, mm -hmm. which makes them harder to measure. As we do more science and our instruments improve, 
whatever the largest star is, will change. The star that is currently thought to be among the largest we found... Okay, okay, Kuskuzer, you're redeeming yourself. You're about to give us at least what we currently know. ...is Stevenson 218. Stevenson. It was probably born as a main sequence star a few tens of times the mass of the sun and has likely lost about half its mass by now. While typical red hypergiants are 1,500 times the size... 1,500 times the size of the sun. And as we already talked about, just try picturing this in your mind in stages so you could comprehend a vastness. Just being inside that star would be a universe in essence the sun the largest rough estimate places stevenson 218 at 2150 solar radii and shining with almost half a million times the power of the sun 500 by comparison 000. the sun seems like a grain of dust that's what i'm saying this is ridiculous what's out there our brains don't really have a way of grasping this kind of scale. Thank you, Koska's Arts. Even at light speed, it would take you 8.7 hours to travel around it once. The fastest plane on Earth would take around 500 years. 500 years. 500 years. Dropped on the sun, it would fill Saturn's orbit. Oh my God. As it evolves, it will probably shed even more mass and shrink down into another hotter hypergiant phase, accumulate heavy elements in its core before finally exploding in a core collapse supernova. Ooh, talk about going blind. Giving its gas back to the galaxy. This gas will then go on to form another generation of stars of all sizes, starting the cycle of birth and death again to light up our universe. Let's make this journey again, but this time without the talking. The universe is big. There are many large things in it. Jeez. 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 My goodness. My goodness. Oh my God. What? It just doesn't stop. What? That's what I was saying. That is insane. Puts a lot of things in perspective. If you're complaining about the small things in your life, just realize how, I won't say insignificant it is, but it is, right? Compared to what's out there in the universe and the level of extremes there are that exist in the universe, we are super blessed to be where we are on this planet with such a stable orbit, stable sun, and stable weather, it's, it's practically heaven, if you think about it. If we compare to what exists out there in the dark space, we are super blessed. And that blessing has given a chance for life to flourish how it has. All right. So let me know what you think. How has this size comparison make you reflect on life science the universe let me know in the comments what you think i want to hear your thoughts and your ideas also if you have any other uh, video requests go ahead go ahead put it in the comments i want to hear them i want to see them i want to watch them with you thank you for watching make sure you like subscribe share with friends and i'll see you in the next video take care